Welcome back to Love Letters and Mixtapes. I am so glad you're here. This is a weekly podcast with new episodes available every Monday morning. The inspiration for this podcast was a desire to write, share, and talk about things that our younger selves needed to hear, whether that was 30 years ago, three years ago, or yesterday. After you listen to this episode, please make sure to subscribe on your favorite listening platform, rate it and review it on Apple Podcasts, or share it with friends. If you enjoy this episode, please consider sponsoring this podcast with a small monthly donation by clicking the link in my Instagram bio at Love Letters and Mixtapes. I want to thank the sponsor of this podcast, Snake River Roasting Company is an organic coffee roaster located in the beautiful mountains of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. They roast award-winning coffees, and their mission and commitment to supporting the rights of women farmers around the world are just incredible. I started my morning with a cup of their Rome, Wyoming organic coffee blend. And if you're ready to fall in love with your coffee, Snake River Roasting Company has a free shipping code for you to give their delicious coffee a taste. Head to their website, snakeriverroastingco.com, and use the code COFFEELOVE at checkout for free shipping on all domestic coffee orders. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. Apple Gift Card is a practical gift that unlocks a world of entertainment and fun. You can send it via email or give a physical card to your loved ones. Your friends and family can spend it on their favorite Apple services, including Apple subscriptions. Apple Gift Card can be used to buy all things Apple. Products, accessories, apps, games, movies, TV shows, iCloud Plus, and more. Visit apple.com for details and to send Apple Gift Cards to your friends and family this holiday season. So if you are anything like me, you may have an entire library in your notes app on your phone. I write in mine all day long. Sometimes I think that I do that so I won't overshare with the people in my life. It can act as a filter and it sifts out some of my big emotions or clarifies how I actually feel about something. And I have a pages-long note full of podcast topics and journal prompts. The content is endless. So as long as I have the time to record and edit it, this little show will probably go on forever. But it was kind of strange because this week, as I sat down to outline this episode, None of the topics in my notes app felt authentic to me in the moment. And the whole purpose of this show is to create a space where we can all drop into our authenticity and explore what's rising to the surface in our own lives. So I thought that it was probably best to anchor into my own truth and share about something that's very, very present for me these days. And of course, some people might judge me for it, Other people might be annoyed that I'm lifting the veil on something that they've also been feeling, but someone out there listening may also feel seen and heard for the first time in a long time, and that's all I care about. And what I felt called to speak about is the journey of coming home to ourselves or finding ourselves again after we've wandered off our path and all the beauty and cringe and discomfort and realizations that come with that experience. Now, maybe you don't relate to that topic, and your life has just been one long flowing river that moves you easily downstream, and nothing, including these last two years of a pandemic apocalypse, can change that. And if that's the case, then maybe just listen to this episode as an experiment in deepening empathy for the people in your life who are having a very different experience right now. But I think that the chances are that almost everyone listening at this moment knows the feeling that I'm talking about, even if you're not in it right now. And that feeling is that you're moving through your life, putting one foot in front of the other, checking all the boxes, crossing everything off your list, You go to school, you have relationships, maybe you have some hobbies, you get the degree, you show up to work every day, and then you just stop one day, look around, 
and realize this isn't my life. This isn't me. This isn't what I want. This, this isn't what I saw for myself. What am I doing? And this almost panic rises up. Or maybe somewhere along the line, you took a drastic turn and started walking a path that doesn't serve you. Whether that's abusing alcohol, drugs, sex, relationships, anything that begins to distort your perception and challenge your ability to function in an optimal way. And it feels like you're alone, completely alone with whatever it is that has you in a chokehold. And you know that it's trying to kill you, but at the same time, it feels like oxygen or it feels like your best and only friend. Maybe you've been gradually turning the volume down on your soul until there's nothing more than static in the background, and it's completely drowned out by the voices of everyone around you. Maybe you found yourself acquiescing a bit too much, agreeing too much, doing things to make other people happy, or to keep the peace, or to keep someone in your life by changing yourself or making yourself less. Or maybe the psychedelic apocalyptic carnival ride of the last two years has just gotten to you and you almost feel some shame because you're looking around and seeing that other people bounce back like it was just a weird lost weekend and it didn't really have an effect on them at all. Maybe it changed your whole life, your resources, your coping mechanisms, your health, your relationships, and how you see the world. Maybe you're struggling to find a place of alignment, of mental, physical, emotional, and financial health. Maybe you're barely keeping your head above water and you feel like you can't tell anyone about it. Or maybe you're feeling exactly like me and you are the difficult love child of Don Draper losing and finding his mind in Big Sur after writing his own cross-country extended dance remix of Jack Kerouac's On the Road and David Bowie singing about Major Tom drifting off into the galaxy in Space Oddity, (laughs) which is pretty much how I would describe myself 24 hours a day these days. And whatever it is, whether I described you perfectly or I completely missed the mark, The feeling of having wandered off our path, of losing ourselves, of not recognizing the person we see in the mirror or the life we're living. It's something that simultaneously numbs us and lights up all our senses at once. There are these slow waves of panic that come with it, a feeling that we have to take drastic action right now. Or that everyone was given a life manual at birth and we just didn't get one. And those feelings, whether they're driven by fear, shame, anxiety, self-loathing, or grief, they can confuse us even more. They can be the final wave that pulls us under. Or they can be the ladder that helps us to climb out of all of it. These feelings have been so present in my own life, and I hesitate to share about this stage in my own journey. Not because I think it's so rare or extreme or that no one would understand me. I hesitate because I know that sometimes being in a deep relationship with the entirety of this human experience, the good and the bad, the easy and the difficult, the abundance and the deprivation, the soothing and the ache, that can sometimes be very triggering for the people in our lives who may not even know that they are disconnected from themselves. So I stop myself from sharing about these things because I don't want someone in my life to pathologize me or catastrophize my experience or feelings when it's just what I signed up for as a human being having a human experience. And I don't think anyone does this consciously or they're going out of their way to make us feel bad about ourselves. It probably comes from a genuinely caring place, but it does come off as a way for them to escape their own reality by making our moments of indecision or confusion seem like a tragedy, when really, it's just life. And sometimes we do this when we push that good vibes only narrative I have no idea how that's making a comeback, but I'm seeing it everywhere. (laughs) And again, that's probably rooted in good intentions. 
But the impact of cutting someone off from the full spectrum of their emotions isn't as helpful as the world leads us to believe. We tap into our power when we speak our truth, no matter how uncomfortable that truth may be. And sharing the truth of who we are will always bring us to emotional spaces that perfection couldn't even dream of. And I share about that a lot on this podcast. You know, if you listen, you've heard me say it. Your perfection is not required. And I don't care if you believe that you are creating the masterpiece of your life. This journey that we're all on, I don't think it's about putting on better masks or faking our feelings. I actually think it's about stripping away the layers and tapping into our core. But you never know. I could be wrong about all of that. So maybe don't listen to me. (laughs) And I guess I felt that I wanted to talk about that this week because we are being pummeled by all the end of the year messages and this whole idea of New Year's resolutions and how this is the only time that we get to make big changes. I do think that there's something powerful about going inward in these darker and colder months. There's power in retreating and gathering our energy but we can change our whole lives any day of the week. And change is just always possible. And we get to make those changes on our own schedule. And so that's why I wanted to talk about this coming home to ourselves after we've fallen off our path or wandered from our path. I was also really inspired to talk about this uncomfortable topic of losing ourselves and finding ourselves again because I saw two posts on social media this week that made me want to just let out a big sigh and facepalm myself into another dimension. The first one was, if the younger version of you from five years ago could see you right now, they would be so proud of how far you've come. And I read that, and all I could think was, if the me from five years ago could see who I am right now and the life I'm living, she would be so disappointed in me and may gently want to punch me in the face. And the second post was something like, if you're really honest with yourself, you'll look around and admit that you are living the life you used to dream about. And I read that one, and all I could think was, no, sir, I most certainly am the fuck not. (laughs) And at first, I was so embarrassed. There was this major wave of shame that just took over my whole being. And instead of running from it, I just sat with it for a while And you know that what happens when we sit with uncomfortable feelings, the muddy water clears in the stillness and we can receive some good information about who we are, what we want, and all the many ways that we have been attempting to get our needs met. And the one saving grace from realizing that we are at this crossroads in our life and have wandered off the path is that it means that we know what it feels like to be in perfect alignment in living the life of our dreams, because we can discern the difference between what we had and what we currently have, what we are surviving and what it felt like to thrive in the past. And the runner-up saving grace is that we have come to some level of awareness or discomfort. And that's always helpful. We could spend the next 20 years of our lives in this hazy, muted dream, or we could experience the shock of waking up, looking around, and saying, this isn't what I want. Then comes the opportunity for us to do something about it, which can be hard, because in the midst of all of our confusion, we can feel worn down, tired, self-conscious, or that we don't have the tools or resources necessary. Whenever I'm at that point, the point I'm at now, (laughs) I always think about this one scene in a film called The Edge with Anthony Hopkins. And it's one of those like bizarre 90s films where he's in the wilderness and there's a bear chasing him and there's a supermodel there for some reason. (laughs) Like literally none of it makes sense. But there's this one scene when he realizes that he and his companions are lost in the wilderness. And he says... I once read an interesting book which said most people lost in the wilderness die of shame. They say things like, what did I do wrong? How could I have gotten myself into this? And so they sit there and they die. 
because they didn't do this one thing that would save their lives, which is to think about what they could do to save themselves. And I've seen that time and time again in my own life, thank you, Anthony Hopkins, and in the people I work with. We get stuck in the intense awareness phase where we are drowning in our shame and the consciousness of how this all feels so wrong and we are unable to take the next indicated action or simply do the next right thing. And I've led plenty of interventions in my life for people suffering from alcohol or drug addiction. There is such an intense awareness in those conversations and so much paralyzing shame that it can sometimes prevent people from receiving the answers that are right in front of them. The shame is almost like wearing a blindfold. And in an intervention, that can look like someone having destroyed their entire life, their body, their mind, their relationships, their finances, their professional life, their kids' lives, and they're overwhelmed by the chaos, the destruction, the shame, and then I'll talk to them and start offering solutions like, hey kid, maybe let's check into the hospital. <laughs> Or here's a rehab, you know, they have a bed for you. Everyone in your life supports you. Um, Or let's go to an AA meeting. You don't have to do anything. It's free. You can just walk through the door and sit down and listen for 45 minutes and then you leave. They don't make a commission on you. Like it's totally just an open door policy. And the response will sometimes be, yeah, that sounds good, but I don't think I need that or not right now or I have too much to do, or I'll figure it out on my own, or I'm sure it'll get better or fix itself. And all of that is such a powerful lesson to watch someone block themselves from opportunity, solution, change, counterintuitive action that could save their life. I am not making fun of it in any way. It's an incredibly humbling thing to witness. And I always think to myself, In what way, even if it's just 1%, am I doing what that person is doing? And I'm just so grateful to witness and receive those lessons. Because I've never heard anyone say, damn, I'm so mad I got sober when I did. I should have stayed out there longer and destroyed more of my life or hurt some more people or put myself in more danger. Everyone ends up saying, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I say yes sooner? Why didn't I just let someone help me? And I encourage you to pause and do an on-the-spot inventory and ask yourself what feelings rise to the surface in those moments of displacement or dissatisfaction in your life, whether it's as extreme as dealing with addiction or it's another area of your life. It's your relationship. It's your finances. It's your professional life. Or you're living in a city that you don't want to be in. What feelings do you try to numb or talk yourself out of? What feelings are you ashamed of? And what have you been doing lately, immediately following these feelings? What are your habits? What activities do you use to distance yourself from the discomfort? And in what ways are these activities blocking you from listening to your intuition? What story is your mind telling you about what is happening, what you're doing, or what you need? And if you move in any wellness or spiritual spaces, there is so much language about all the things that we are doing wrong in these moments. How we could be better, more spiritual, more positive, exert more control, or how we could manifest anything. And I'm sure that there is an audience for that and a time and place for it as well. But that never really resonated with me. And that's not what I'm talking about in this episode. Yes, I could list 10 or 20 things that we could all do on an energetic shred, so to speak, to immediately get ourselves back on some kind of track and propel us forward. There's a lot of content about that out there. But instead, I would like us to take the path of tenderness and gentleness, no matter how much those two words make some of us cringe. Because there is a profound difference diving into a structured regimen laid out for us by a stranger who has tailored their entire life to fit into a health and wellness aesthetic. I'm not even knocking it. There are great tools out there. I use a ton of them. 
But in the case of feeling disconnected from ourselves, of having fallen off our path, to not hear our name being called by the universe, in those moments, the greatest tool may not be doing what someone else is doing. It might be doing the things that bring you closest to yourself. I mentioned shame earlier. And where is shame loudest in our lives? It's when we think about ourselves, who we are, what we've done, what other people think of us. So this returning to ourselves, coming back to our path, coming home to ourselves, we can access this by doing things that feel like us. And it's probably the most powerful way to move through shame and disconnection that I know of. And it's almost a statement to the universe that we know that we are enough and that we deserve to be here. So what does that look like? Believe it or not, the first thing I thought of was something I used to do with the hospice patients that I worked with called compassionate cooking. Now you might think, why is she talking about how to treat people in the end of life stage in an episode where we're talking about getting back on the right path in our life? Compassionate cooking is when you ask someone what their favorite childhood foods were, the things that bring them into a full sensory bittersweet ache. The food that reminds them of a sense of home or being nurtured or cared for in the simplest way possible. And I understand that not everyone has this experience with food or with their childhood. Obviously, this is something you speak about with them. Maybe it's a meal that they associated with freedom or adulthood or anything that brings them into a beautiful memory. And we cook those meals for them in the house. That's compassionate cooking. Even if the person can't eat the food, can't sit up in bed, they can tap into the feeling of someone caring for them and drop into that energetic space of being nurtured and relaxing and feeling like themselves as they smell their favorite meal being prepared. And it touches such a deep place inside people. You have no idea. It's such a beautiful thing. I'm so grateful I got to witness it. So... How does that apply to what we're talking about today? I encourage you to give it some thought and write down some of the things that are your versions of compassionate cooking. It doesn't even have to be food. That was just a starting point. Just think about all of the things that make you feel like you, who you are at your core, without self-consciousness, without shame, without trying to impress anyone. Almost a written vision board or Pinterest board of all the things that make you who you are. And when you have your list, then you check in with yourself and you see how distanced or detached you are from these things. When was the last time you wore your favorite clothes? Listened to your favorite songs? Ate your favorite food? Relaxed the way you want to relax? without being chased by the thought of being productive or positioning yourself to be seen as attractive through the gaze of someone else? When was the last time you learned something new or were truly curious about a person, place, or thing and let yourself explore it? When was the last time you let yourself dream about what it is that you want without talking yourself out of it? or immediately thinking of all the reasons that it can't happen. What are the things that make you say yes with your whole chest? And I'm not encouraging you to live in the past version of yourself. I'm encouraging you to place yourself in a position where you tap into the resonance and joy of being a version of you that you are completely in love with. Not so you can go back to the past and be that person again, but to bring yourself into a position of neutrality, to face yourself in your life without the weight of anxiety or confusion that may currently be blocking you, to shift out of the space of maybe being at war with yourself or disappointed in yourself, and instead bring yourself into a space of complete acceptance and maybe even a little adoration. And I bring this up now because I'm in that place too, where I am so far away from things that feel like me that I can't imagine ever finding my way back to them. 
but I know that these pieces of us are touchstones that have just scattered a bit, and they can find their way back to us. And it's one thing if someone tells us to do these things when they're living their dream life and everything they touch turns to gold. But I don't know about you, that's not a message of depth and weight for me. (laughs) But when someone is walking beside me and saying, I'm where you are, I've been where you are, and this is what I'm doing to find myself again, that's something I'd listen to. And that's why I thought it was important to talk about this topic while I'm actually going through it myself. This week, I wrote something kind of embarrassing, but so true, and I'm sure someone listening can relate, so I'm going to share it, (laughs) but I wrote that I can't even recognize myself after these last two and a half years. I feel so far away from myself that I can't imagine ever feeling like me again, and I want to feel like me because I loved me. I loved feeling like me so, so, so much. And I would do anything to get back to myself again. I would even stand under my own bedroom window with a boombox playing Peter Gabriel songs like in that film Say Anything. I would make the grand gesture to get myself back. But the reality is that this time I'm referring to, these last two and a half years, or whatever it is for you, it changes us. So as much as I want to get back to who I was, Maybe it's the yearning that has to propel me forward to find out who I am about to become with all of those pieces of my past self still within me. A few weeks ago, I posted an Ask Me Anything box on Instagram, and someone asked for relationship advice. And I am the first to admit that although I am great at connecting with people and navigating relationships and maintaining friendships with almost everyone I've ever been on a first date with, and even guiding some people in couple sessions, I don't always feel that my own life is a great place to pull relationship advice from. Maybe I'm self-conscious, I don't know, but it's not an area where I feel that I'm in my zone of genius, and that's just me being honest. But the best piece of advice that I did share was something that my friend Dan told me years ago when I was at a crossroads in every area of my life. Work, where I was living, who I was dating, everything. It was all up in the air and I was pretty confused. And much like the topic of this episode, I had fallen off my path and I wanted to come back home to myself. And when I told him that, he said, how about you run as fast as you can towards God? And if someone keeps up, introduce yourself. And I love that advice. It definitely came at the right time for me. And I understood that When he said God, he wasn't referring to some old man in the sky that I could only connect with in church. He was talking about God as an experience. God as our passions, our highest selves, the things that light us up, things that make our life worth living, whatever it is that gets us out of bed in the morning. And his advice was to run towards those things with everything we've got. Even when we think it might take us off the path of meeting the right person or being in the right job or doing the things that other people expect of us. And he was encouraging this because he believed that, yes, life falls apart, but it also comes back together. So why not be your true self, your whole self, when that happens? This was never going to be one of those episodes where I just lay out all the things you can do to be the better version of you, because that's not what I need to hear right now. So I'm hoping whoever is in a similar position hears these words and just knows that you are enough. It's not about being someone else right now. It's about being the most you that you could ever be. And trusting that as you walk back towards yourself, you are walking back towards your path and your highest alignment. Something that I've been saying a lot this year is that I just feel like God doesn't know how to find me. Like the universe doesn't know how to find me. I'm just not on the map. And that's a really difficult way to feel when you've spent most of your life feeling really connected and having those God experiences with the people around you and the things you're doing. So I can wallow in the shame of that. 
I can say to myself, oh, I'm the only person who feels this way. I'm the only person who's lonely or disappointed in these last few years or struggling to conjure up a new image of a life I can rebuild when the world keeps changing every five minutes. You know, I I know a lot of people aren't talking about it, but I just want to encourage you that you are safe to talk about it. And you might be surprised, you know, when you bring that up and you start that conversation with the people in your life, maybe someone needs to hear it. And they don't need to hear the, you know, the good vibes, positive mental attitude, you know, all that stuff can be really helpful, but maybe they need your truth, your curiosity, you know, you're questioning, what am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be showing up right now? Maybe that establishes safety for them and you guys connect about it together. I know that that always helps me. And so I hope that this episode landed in the time and space that it needs to. I hope it touched the right people. And I hope you feel seen and heard if you're going through a similar experience. You are not alone. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all figured out. And a lot of this confusion, this being at the crossroads, sometimes I always like to think of it as I need to be here in order for the next thing to happen. Like the whole world around me needs to come together and be in alignment and sort of fit. And then it'll start working through my life. And in the meantime, maybe our job is not to push forward as fast and hard as possible and just muscle through it. Maybe this time is an invitation to just fall back in love with ourselves, what really makes us us. The things about us that don't change, whether it's our circumstances, our relationships, where we are, it's those things. And it brings us closer to those things right now. And maybe that's what we need. I wanted to close this episode with a quote that I love. I've definitely shared it here before, but I'm going to share it again because I've always heard it at the exact right time, and maybe someone listening needs it today. It's a quote by Terrence McKenna, and he said, Nature loves courage. You make the commitment, and nature will respond to that commitment by removing impossible obstacles. Dream the impossible dream, and the world will not grind you under. It will lift you up. This is the trick. This is what all these teachers and philosophers who really counted who really touched the alchemical gold, this is what they understood. This is the shamanic dance in the waterfall. This is how magic is done, by hurling yourself into the abyss and discovering it's a feather bed. And until next week, make sure to hit the follow button on your favorite podcast listening platform. Check out this week's playlist on my personal Spotify account and join me on Instagram at loveletters and mixtapes. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider making a small monthly donation to support this podcast by clicking the link in my Instagram bio.